Thank you for joining us at the ever-improving No Sound Bites Allowed podcast. My name is Michael Vasquez. We thank you for joining us in this adventure of describing the politics that go on in our nation on a personal and local level as often as possible, giving you, the audience, more than just 30 seconds to understand what's going on in our nation. We look forward to joining you as we go. Just sit back, enjoy the ride. Please remember, if you like the episodes, like it, share it, let other people know. And if you can, please donate, even if it's $2, even if it's 5 because it all makes a difference. We thank you, and here we go. Well, hello, everybody. That's right. It's your favorite program. This is No Sound Bites Allowed with your host, Michael Voss, the Dragon of the Southern Tier. And oh my, do we have flames and fire for today. It's going to be quite the show because there's been a lot going on recently, a lot of news, and we have some breaking news as well. That's right. News flash. News flash. That's right. There's some breaking news out there. And that's in particular in the state of uh, Virginia where we're finding out uh, about a social worker and the Second Amendment. And it's not a confirmed story yet, although it's being carried by many of the news stations out out there. Uh, uh, Daily Caller, Daily Coast, believe it or not, uh, amongst a few others, Town Hall, uh, a few other uh, news outlets. But before I get to that, I want to take a step back or something else I want to address first, because I think it's very important. Uh, now on Saturday, uh, excuse me, on Thursday, which was March 8th, I was at the Republican Lincoln dinner for the county of Broome, Broome County, New York. And it was a great event. Um, well over 350 Republicans came out to meet with a bunch of the candidates, our current and incumbent Congresswoman Claudia Tenney, uh, Mayor Rich David, and uh, State Senator Fred Akshar were at the event and were able to speak, as well as I had the opportunity to meet with the gubernatorial uh, candidate, De Francisco, and in particular, I had a great opportunity to speak with the woman who is running for the New York State Senate against uh, current incumbent Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, and her name is Shell Farley. And uh, that's C-H-E-L-E, Farley, F-A-R-L-E-Y. And you can, of course, go to her website, which is, uh, and I want to bring it up exactly here. It is Shell Farley for Senate. So C-H-E-L-E, F-A-R-L-E-Y, for Senate.com. And you can look up her information for yourself. I had a great opportunity speaking with her. She's been in Broome County before. Um, for several events and a great, great woman had wonderful conversation with her. I think I was speaking with her on and off throughout the entire night. Uh, I'd say probably a half hour, an hour long, which is a lot of time and a great opportunity to know more about her and how well she's on top of the issues. Now I bring her up and I bring up the Lincoln dinner for a very specific reason, because the very next day, we had the rare treat, and this is very rare, that State Senator, excuse me, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand actually appeared in Broome County in Binghamton. And this is rare because she almost never, almost never comes into Broome County. She's much like uh, Governor Cuomo and uh, Senator uh, Charles Schumer, who never appear here. They just they, if they ever come into Broome County, it's usually to go to Binghamton University. They make an announcement very quickly and then they leave immediately. So no one really has a chance to find out about the event or even attend it or ask questions, forget questions. Chuck Schumer never takes questions, neither does uh, Governor Andrew Cuomo. And so it was very surprising to see that Senator Gillibrand was coming into Broome County and that she actually notified well, Mayor Rich David's office that she was going to be here because it never happens in all the other visits she's had. She's never notified the city about her appearance. I don't know. Maybe Democrats just don't want people to know that they're there. It could be. Could be a lot of reasons, but that's something we've noticed. 
Now, the thing that's important about this for uh, Senator Gillibrand is the fact that when she showed up, she just decided that she was going to be announcing a, a new bill that she's planning to put out. And in effect, her bill is going to be uh, to increase the ability of small business to get government loans and reduce the fees that are attributed to the small business loans. And so the, the idea is that if you had a small business loan for under $350,000, you would not have any fees that normally currently exist on those loans, and it would make it easier for your business to have that loan and to expand your business uh, to get new equipment or to just grow the business, and it's targeted towards small manufacturers. There's about 33,000 manufacturers in this state of New York, and so it's meant to improve their uh, ability to do business and to grow their businesses, and that's something that New York State needs a lot of since under Governor Andrew Cuomo, New York State has lost one million people, which have also taken away thousands of jobs and businesses, and we've lost, I believe it's about $1.1 trillion in revenue that have left with the 1 million individuals uh, who have exited our state because of the fact that we are number 50 in terms of um, business friendliness, and we're one of the worst states in the nation for any job, for any business and any business growth, and we have $4 billion in debt. And this is all under the policies of Governor Andrew Cuomo and the 60 years of Democrat control over the state. And we've been losing population for six decades plus. We're still continuing to lose people. And we're going to lose another congressional seat. So we're losing in every aspect. So to hear Senator Gillibrand say that she wants to help business, manufacturing business especially, in New York State is a big deal, and it was very important, and it's a bit of a surprise that she came to Broome County, one of the most uh, in-need counties of the 62 counties in New York State. Uh, we have approximately 18, 19% in poverty in Broome County. We have yet to recover from the recession of 2009, and uh, it, it's a difficult business environment especially under the policies of Governor Cuomo, who's now trying to institute a brand new tax to another billion dollar tax uh, that he decided to create because H.R. 1, otherwise known as the uh, Tax Act, the Tax Reform and Jobs Act, was um, it's putting money into the pockets of American citizens, especially in New York State, and he's created a new tax to take away that money and spend it. Now, that brings me to the part that really, really shocks me. Because when Senator Gillibrand stated that she's here to help small businesses, she forgot to mention that the day before, she was here on Friday, March 9th, and on March 7th, Senator Chuck Schumer reported and announced that the plan for the Democratic Party in the midterm elections for 2018 is that they are going to institute a tax increase. Check it out, folks. You can look at the article. It's on Politico on March 7th. And Senator Schumer is stating clearly that the plan is that the Democrats want to go back and increase the corporate tax rate which is directly opposed to what Senator Gillibrand is saying. So on one hand, she's saying, I'm going to help small businesses, especially manufacturing, by giving them the ability to get a loan. But I'm going to hurt businesses because she supports Senator Schumer in increasing the corporate tax rate that we've been fighting for more than two decades. Democrats and Republicans alike have been fighting to lower the tax rate, the corporate tax rate, in the United States from 35% at the highest in the world, in the developed world. And we finally got it down. Finally, we got it down to 21%. Puts us in the middle of the pack of developed nations. Not the best, not the worst, but competitive. And now Democrats are promising 
that if they take control in 2018, they are going to raise taxes. By the way, it's not just business taxes. They're going to increase business tax. They're going to increase the individual personal tax, and they're going to re reinstate the death tax, the estate tax that has hurt many, many small businesses across the entire nation and especially in New York State. So I, I find it quite interesting that she's taking this, uh, I, I, you could call it a flip-flop, you could call it a, a schism, a schizophrenic episode, I don't know what you would quite call it, when you're saying that on one hand, hey, I want to help small business, and on the other hand, you're actively looking to hurt business. I, I don't understand that. And of course, it wasn't reported in her announcement in Binghamton. She didn't mention the fact that she's looking to increase corporate tax rates, uh, corporate tax rates, or that she was going to increase the individual taxes. I mean, we have a sound just for that, and I think you'll understand it clearly here because it's. That's right. It's truth. The truth is that she's hurting businesses. Her intent, and by the way, it, just so it's very, very clear, let's look at her voting record. Senator Kirsten Gillibrand voted against the Tax Reform and Jobs Act, which is otherwise known as HR1, and she voted against that. So she voted against cutting the corporate tax rate from 35% to 21% to help small businesses in New York State and across the nation. She, she didn't want that. She wanted a higher tax rate for businesses. But yet, and that's what she voted. That's how she actually voted. She has supported Charles Schumer, our senator, on everything he has done. And she, there's no reason to believe that she won't support him in this plan to increase taxes if they win the midterm elections. And so she is actively saying that, oh, I'm going to help you with a loan if you can get the loan. But in the meantime, you're going to pay more in taxes. We're going to hurt you by increasing your taxes instead of lowering it. Instead of the 423 businesses that have raised uh, raised uh, uh, income and what they're paying their employees and put out bonuses, increased jobs and creating factories, 423 businesses with over 4 million individuals across the nation, including New York State, being affected and being helped by the tax cut, she's actively going to reverse that. And we're supposed to believe that because she's going to have this one bill, which will help a very small segment of the manufacturers in the country and in New York State, and allow them to be able to get a loan, that that's supposed to make it all better, that this is somehow going to actually help business because she's going to get them a loan without a call, without a fee, but in the meantime, they're going to pay higher taxes personally and as a business. Do you understand why people are leaving New York State? You want to increase taxes. Why? We didn't even have the taxes down for a full year yet, and they're already planning to increase taxes. They're already looking to hurt businesses and individuals by taking more of your money, as just like Governor Cuomo, because the American public are getting more money. He has decided to create a brand new tax to take that money away from you so that they can spend it. It's not even like they're paying down on the debt. They have new spending plans for entitlements that they're going to spend this money on. So you're not saving anything. No one is getting anything better unless you're, you know, uh, already getting government aid or you're getting some quote free money, uh, or you're, and more importantly, unless you happen to be one of the illegal aliens in this nation, which Senator Gillibrand supports, and she was all in favor of and was supportive of the shutdown of the government to represent illegal aliens who have broken our laws and continue to evade prosecution of the law and are demanding a reward for breaking our laws. This is her plan. This is what she thinks is the best thing for the nation. And she's saying that 
in rewarding criminals and in increasing taxes, this is somehow going to help small businesses. I just think it's very important for people to have a clear understanding of what is really going on because I know people will say, huh, well, she's going to help small business. No, look at the full picture. Don't look at just that one little sound bite, which I know she wants people to hear about. What about the other part? What about the fact that you're going to increase corporate taxes? You're going to increase individual taxes that you're going to punish the public and you're going to take away our money and you're going to spend it to help illegal aliens and give them a reward. I think that's part of the story. You can't have the one without the other because it's all the same story. It's where she stands on business and the American people. And I think it's important for the public to know that. But that's the first segment. And we have a lot more news coming up. There's a lot more stuff that's going on right now. And we're going to come right back in a second. Uh, But we'll take a little break and then we'll be right back. Everybody and thank you for joining us back at No Sound Bites Allowed. This is your host, Michael Voss, the Dragon of the Southern Tier, talking about the issues that affect us all every day. And in the first segment, we were talking about the re- revelation that uh, Senator Kristen Kirsten, excuse me, Kirsten Gillibrand, is on the one hand talking about how she's trying to help small businesses and manufacturers in New York State and across the country. While at the same time, she has supported and is supporting uh, the increase of taxes that under Senator Schumer and the Democrat leadership have stated that that's their plan for 2018 in the midterm elections and beyond, that they're going to increase taxes on small businesses, on individuals. They're going to remove, uh, they're going to increase the, excuse me, they're going to lower the death tax so that it's going to hurt people more, the deduction on it, that they're going to basically reverse all of the gains that people have gotten. And so the extra money you're receiving right now, they're going to take it away. And she supports that. She voted against the the fact that people could get these better taxes, which was HR1, and she uh, voted against that. So that's the first segment. And that was big news. Uh, I think that's really important to get the reality, not that 30 second soundbite of, Ooh, we're helping businesses and really get to the core of, no, you're not. That's just a gimmick. That's just a gimmick. It sounds great. It's a sound bite. 30 seconds. Someone's going to look at the headline and go, Oh, she's helping businesses and miss the fact that no, she's not. But that's why we're here on this show 
to talk about the reality of what our politicians are doing and what's really going on beyond that 30 seconds and looking at the big picture of what they're actually doing. And along those lines, I want to go into what's essentially becoming breaking news. Newsflash. Newsflash. I really do like that little blurb there. I don't know. I don't know if everyone does, but I like it. I made it. I think it's kind of neat. So the news flash is about what's going on in Virginia. Now, uh, you may have heard about this. The story just started on Friday. It's really broken out yesterday, uh, which would be March 10th. And that is that in Virginia, there is a social worker, or there was a social worker, by the name of Storm Durham. And she, uh, she's 22, and apparently it's being reported, and she has stated on Facebook, and Facebook Live and in a post, that she was fired as a social worker because she has a gun permit. Now, let me clarify that again. She is claiming that she was fired from her job as a social worker because she has a permit for concealed carry. Not that she had a gun on premises, not because uh, anyone was endangered, but because she has the permit, which she claims in her Facebook posts and uh, her Facebook Live video, that she has never carried a firearm to work or on the job, and she has she gained and got that because she is a hunter and she wants to protect herself as a woman and that she had been the victim of sexual abuse. Uh, this is what she has claimed. Now, the story so far has been covered by Town Hall, the Daily Coast, believe it or not, Daily Coast, one of the most far left liberal progressive uh, sites that you could ever find. Uh, they've covered this even though they're doubting Thomas's and blaming this is just right wing uh, stories, but they can't, no one's confirmed this yet. It's been carried by the daily caller. It's been on Twitter. It's covered by Breitbart. So it's really growing news everywhere across the nation. People are learning about this and there is outrage. Now everyone has said the same thing. We have, no one has been able to confirm if this is true. I know that, um, just in looking over the Daily Caller, they too tried to confirm this. Uh, no one in the social workers department in Virginia were able to confirm or deny that this is the case. Um, there were supposedly three officers, police officers, that were there to escort her off of the premises of her job. Um, and the police department has not confirmed or denied that this is true in part or in whole. So at this moment... Nobody knows what the real story is. All we know is what she has claimed, Storm Daniel, uh, Durham, that she has claimed that she has been fired because she had a permit to conceal carry a firearm, legally registered guns, legally issued permit, and that this, because she has this, she claims they stated that since they could never know whether or not she is carrying a firearm, that she was a danger to her work. Now, that's kind of terrifying. And when I look at the environment that we're in, when I listen to the way that, you know, we're told on one hand by many liberals and uh, Democrats that, oh, they're, they're not after our guns. They don't want to take our guns from us. And then I look at bills like H.R. 5087, uh, which you may not have looked up. I just did an article on it. That's the assault weapons ban of 2018. It's actually H.R. 5087. I recommend everyone look it up and see it for themselves. I actually did an in-depth analysis, checking all of the references in the ways that it changes the law. I went back and I looked at 18 U.S.C. 99, uh, 922, 18 U.S.C. 924, 18 U.S.C. 933, all of the relevant, relevant bills, even going back to 1934 and the National Firearms Act of 1934, which are all changed by 
H.R. 5087, the assault weapons ban of 2018, and I looked at how it affects it. And believe it or not, and you should, this new law, this gun ban of 2018, will cause you to lose your firearms. They, they are going to take your guns. Very simply because it violates the Second Amendment, the Fourth Amendment, the Tenth Amendment. Because it allows, in the changing of the wording and the definitions, almost any semi-automatic rifle has suddenly become a, quote, assault, end quote, weapon, which is not true and inaccurate and a made-up term. But it, it classifies the men this way, and it allows that if you do not store the firearm properly, which is almost impossible for anyone to verify if it is or is not, without having to go into your home and actually inspecting it for its safety features, but you are required to notify the government of all firearms, you are required to notify the government of how you are storing those firearms, which of course would need a in-person inspection to be able to verify the safety of those firearms. And if it is not considered up to standard, if they are not safe enough according to guidelines that are not made clear, then it is possible for the government to seize your firearms without a trial, prior to any trial or any uh, determination in court, the government can take your firearms and there you go. And then, oh, and by the way, you will also be listed on the NICS, otherwise known as NICS, uh, background check. So you would no longer be able to buy any firearm, which they do not need to notify you about until you actually go to purchase a firearm. You will be put onto that database so you can no longer buy firearms. And again, because you're on the NICS, it is possible that you can have your firearms taken. So in several levels, they're looking to take your firearms through changes. By the way, even if you did store your weapon properly, notified the government of all firearms that you have, had someone come in and inspect it and say that it's up to safety standards, which is not defined on how that would be done, uh, you did all of that. If you had a magazine that carries more than 10 bullets, then again, you have violated the law according to the H.R. 5087, the assault weapons ban of 2018. And because of that, again, you can be put on the NICS list. And again, they can come and take your firearms without a trial prior to going into court and having this resolved, if it can be resolved, because again, the process to resolve this is not defined in the law, but you would be able to have all of your firearms seized, all of them. Isn't that fun? Now, don't, don't believe me. Don't believe me at all. What you can do is you can go and you can try and find this on your own. Look up the law. It's HR 5087. Look it up for yourself. Read through it. I did the article. I'll have it attached, uh, that link to the article. You can read it through. It has links to every one of the relevant laws that are affected and changed by this. And you can make your own determination. Don't believe me. But I see that, that law, the assault weapons ban of 2018, in conjunction with what we're hearing now, that the mere possession of a permit to allow a law-abiding citizen to be able to carry a firearm under the statutes of the state they live in, and having someone say, well, because you are, you have executed and taken advantage of your Second Amendment rights, as is legally defined and allowed, we're going to punish you and take away your job. That is terrifying. And how can we, if this is true, if this story is true, and even if it's not looking at just the assault weapons ban, how can we say that this is not chilling the Second Amendment? How can we say this is not taking away our rights? And how can we say that this isn't effectively taking the guns out of our hands? preventing us to own firearms, punishing us for, for in fact, having the firearms and uh, finding ways to take away the firearms from us, even if we are doing everything according to the way the government is asking us. And remember, the Second Amendment is there. Look at the wording. And I know there are many liberals who like to 
reword what is in there. But what it says is to protect ourselves. Not It's not there for hunting. This isn't about target shooting. This is about protecting ourselves from the government. That is what the Second Amendment is about. It is not about hunting. It is not about foraging. It's not about trap shooting. It is only purpose is to protect ourselves from the government and ensure all of the other rights that we have. It is the cornerstone of everything else. It keeps the government in check. Whether liberals want to admit that or not is another thing, but it that is what it is purpose for. And we are watching on so many levels, if this is correct about Storm Durham in Virginia as a social worker, if she is being punished for legally owning a firearm to protect herself as a woman and going by all of the requirements of the state that she lives in, if she is being impacted, punished for having her Second Amendment, and at the same time we are watching Senator Gillibrand, Senator Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, uh, several of the candidates who are running in 2018, including a Mr. Anthony Brindisi, when we're watching them go out there and try and take away our rights and prevent us from owning firearms, I believe we have to speak out about that because that is a terrifying environment that does not bode well. And I don't mean that tomorrow they're going to come and take all of our guns. I don't. I don't believe that's true. But I believe that if you allow this to go forward, you'll see a generation go by who don't know that they have the right to own a firearm and they will be denied because of the act of omission. If you don't know you have the right and if you are told you shouldn't have the right, you'll never exercise the right. It's the same thing as taking it away. There is no difference. What did Hitler once say? Uh, give me the children of today and I'll own the world tomorrow. Something like that. It's true. If you don't know that you have a Second Amendment right and we're told that you only have the right that the government gives you to protect yourself from the government, only what they allow, then you'll never know that you can protect yourself. It's a terrifying thing. And if this is true with what's going on in Virginia, then I'm, I'm truly terrified for this nation. And we all need to be paying attention. And I advise, pay attention to the bill. It's gotten real quiet, but it's still there. And Democrats are trying to push it through. And they're using every emotional trick in the world and making every promise that they can, kind of like what we're seeing with Senator Gillibrand, promise that she's going to help businesses. In the meantime, they are actively planning to hurt businesses by increasing taxes if they can get power. Well... Same thing here. We're not looking to take away your gun, except we have a lot of ways to take away your gun. It's terrifying. And they're going to punish you just because you have a permit to be able to have that firearm. That's terrifying. But with that all said, I'm going to take a moment. We're going to take another little break. I just need a sip of uh, water in my... I uh, need to take a little sip here. So with that said, let's go and take a quick little break, and then we'll be right back. Oh, wow, that was fast. <laughs> Sometimes it goes a little faster than I expect. Well, hello, folks, and thank you for joining us back at No Sound Bites Allowed. And this is your host, the Dragon of the Southern Tier, Michael Voss, with you once again. 
and we're talking about a lot of the breaking news that's going on right now across our nation, things that are affecting us all in a big way. Well, the next thing I wanted to talk about here, now, so far we've been talking about uh, Senator Kirsten Gillibrand and her sleight of hand in trying to announce that she's going to help small businesses and manufacturers across the country and in New York State, while at the same time hiding with her other hand the fact that Senator Chuck Schumer and Senate Democrats, including herself, are looking to uh, increase taxes and hurt businesses across this nation and hurt individuals by increasing their taxes across this nation if they gain power in the 2018 midterms, something that she didn't mention as she was trying to say she's going to help manufacturers, though something that absolutely will not help manufacturers so that they, she can spend money on illegal aliens and reward them with citizenship and give them free college. That's what they've been supporting. And I have to say, you have to question that. And that's a very terrifying thing. And we're also talking about in the second segment here, how we're watching these very same liberal Democrats go out there and say that they're going to chill the Second Amendment and effectively find ways to either take firearms away from law-abiding citizens or prevent those law-abiding citizens from owning firearms because they don't like the way they look. And we're seeing that, and not only do they not like the way they look, they just don't like the existence of them such that they're willing to take away people's rights, allegedly, um, as we saw in Virginia on, with Storm Durham, who is claiming at this moment, claiming that she was fired because she has a concealed carry permit, not the firearm, not that anyone was endangered, just the existence of that permit, her ability to protect herself as a victim of sexual assault, as a woman, as a avid gun enthusiast, that she is being punished with her work because she is taking advantage of her Second Amendment right. Well, let's follow this theme of rights that are being affected and how they're affecting us, because we've talked so far about commerce. We've talked about the Second Amendment, a touch on the Fourth Amendment. Well, now we're going to talk about the First Amendment. And in that, I want to talk about something that I saw recently by Ben Swan. Now, for people who are not familiar with him, uh, Ben Swan is a former news a journalist with CBS News, amongst others, uh, and uh, he's worked in New Mexico and other locations. He's even won the very coveted Edward, Edward R. Murrow Award. Now, if you don't know who Edward R. Murrow is, he is a news journalist who is famous, historically relevant, because of his fight against McCarthyism. And he won, thank goodness for all of us. But it was a huge battle, and it was because he was being a newsman, a journalist, letting the public know, not just a headline, not just a 30-second soundbite, but telling us, the public, what was really going on and how politicians were abusing their power and harming individuals throughout this nation. So Edward R. Murrow, that award is for excellence in newscasting, in journalism, in allowing the public to know about things that are affecting them. And that's what Mr. Ben Swan has been doing. And Mr. Swan has done it so well. He has a program, uh, which you can see used to be on YouTube, um, but you can still find it. It's on my feed here on Facebook, um, where he does what he calls a reality check. Now, he is a self-professed libertarian, and he covers, and sometimes I agree with him, sometimes I don't, like many libertarians. Um, he addresses issues that are in the news that are affecting the nation. And one of his most recent ones was a story where he's talking about, on Reality Check, his own private program. So it's not a uh, supported major news media program, but his own personal one, where he goes over the recent trend on the Internet to purge dissenting voices, voices that are not part of the liberal progressive mantra. And we're seeing that on Facebook, we're seeing it on Twitter, we're seeing it on YouTube, where there are, they're just going through, and they've announced this, you know, uh, that uh, uh, 
Facebook has announced and YouTube has announced that they have added all these human sensors or, well, sensors to go through and actively delete information to hide content to discourage the conservative voices. Now, they don't say it's to discourage conservative or lib libertarian voices or to uh, promote the liberal progressive agenda. They don't say it that way. But what they have effectively done is going around and without notification, without warning, removing the content and or barring those who make that content. And I'll give you a real world close to home example of that. I know uh, I've been doing this now political commentary for about uh, 12 years. Actually, it is 12 years that I've been doing this. And I have several hundred uh, interviews and coverage, news coverage on YouTube and other social media. And at many of the events that I've covered, where I've gone out live news coverage, where you can see I've covered um, speeches and news events, uh, and I've provided that to the public unedited always. And one of my associates, who's often at these events alongside me, is another public citizen who's not a member of the media, who goes out on his own time, and he does this uh, at his own cost, a gentleman named Mert Melfa, M-E-R-T-M-E-L-F-A. Mert Melfa is known throughout uh, upstate New York for attending various news uh, coverage events and taping um, city hall discussions, uh, council meetings, uh, announcements by candidates and elected officials throughout, mostly I've seen him in the southern tier, but he goes throughout central New York and other places and just tapes the event and provides that live footage. He's even gone to the uh, New York State Assembly and done live footage of discussions on bills that are being presented or not presented to the public. As an example, in 2015, when uh, Assemblyman Anthony Brindisi had claimed that he was putting out a bill to repeal the New York Safe Act, Mert Melfa was present in the committee meeting that would decide whether or not the Assembly would ever even see or discuss the bill by Anthony Brindisi. Anthony Brindisi was not present, did not defend his bill, and it was dead. It died in what they call died in committee, which means that since he didn't care enough to talk about it and say this is worth the Assembly, New York State Assembly, to hear about and to discuss, it was thrown into a wastebasket. In effect, meaning that he never had any intention. It was just a little bit of headline hype to say that he's against the New York Safe Act, but it actually meant nothing. And there was actual video of that committee meeting where it was thrown out and Anthony Bernice did not protect the rights of gun owners throughout New York State. That's what Murph Melfa does. And again, he does this unedited. You get to see the whole video. He does that as a citizen, just doing what citizens are allowed to do by law. And for no reason... No reported reason, no uh, notification, YouTube deleted and terminated his YouTube account. Hundreds of videos wiped out so that you can no longer see what I just described, which happened in, I believe it was March of 2015, just wiped it out. So the public no longer gets to see any of the council meetings that Mr. Mer Mert Melfa had put out there for the public to see. You're not able to see what happened at the committee meetings in the New York State Assembly. You're no longer able to see the full, uncut uh, speeches by several candidates and uh, elected officials throughout New York State because YouTube didn't like it. And so they've removed it because he has, he's a conservative. He's, I believe he's a libertarian, actually. And they just got rid of it. Silenced his voice because they didn't like it. That's a terrifying thing. You know, and this is something that Ben Swan brought up and made very clear. And I have to agree with him. This is a terrifying and chilling thing. When we're watching 
the internet, which is touted as being this wonderful tool to allow the public to speak and to let ideas be shared. And we talk about how it can affect and influence people in China and North Korea and help change the world and spread democracy. And this is such a beautiful thing. And we're listening to the politicians who are out there saying they're going to protect the internet with net neutrality and SOPA and PIPA, you know, Stop Online Piracy Act. These very same politicians who are out there saying that they're going to protect our First Amendment rights by blocking our First Amendment rights are standing there and supporting these social media networks as they are blocking content, as they are denying the public knowledge that would allow them to be able to better vote and ex exercise their right to vote and be able to be informed. I am terrified by this. The, and think about it. The very same people who said with the Stop Online Piracy Act, otherwise known as SOPA, the very same people who said, hey, we're going to protect the Internet by blocking the Internet, are the same people who are saying with net neutrality, we're going to protect the Internet, and are the very same people who are being supported by censorship on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitter, on major social media that are denying the other side of the discussion, the other side of the discussion on Second Amendment. Those people who say, maybe there's a middle road, maybe there's a different path, maybe we shouldn't in terms of DACA, maybe there's a question with rewarding criminals who are unrepentant. You know, when you think about it, you have to wonder, who are they really supporting? Who are they really taking care of? Why is it that they don't want to have the, op the opposing point of view? Why do they not want to hear our voices? I mean, if it weren't for the fact that I independently have been doing this for 12 years, how many news stories have I covered, have I discussed, that you would not be able to hear if it, were for, if it weren't for the fact that I have the First Amendment protecting me? Because it's not YouTube protecting you. It's not Twitter. It's not Facebook. It's not SOPA. It's not the politicians like Senator Kirsten Gillibrand or Anthony, uh, Assemblyman Anthony Brindisi or Senator Charles Schumer or Representative Nancy Pelosi. They're not protecting you. They want you to pay higher taxes. They want to have less freedom with the Second Amendment. They want to use, uh, abuse the Fourth Amendment and take that away from you to be able to take away your firearms. And now they want to go out there and censor what you can, what you can say and what you can find out about on the internet. That's a very troubling set of circumstances in combination. Folks, you don't have to believe me. Go look this up all for yourself. Look into this. I have every day and it troubles me and it should trouble you. Whether you agree with me or not, find out for yourself. Be informed. That's why we do this program. But with that said, I want to thank you uh, for being with us on this program. Um, and I hope that you'll come back and hear more. But until our next program, I wish you the very best. And I want you to have a great weekend. This is No Sound Bites Allowed. We look forward to talking to you soon.